Plex is the media streaming app that beautifully organizes your media collections and lets you securely access them on all your screens. Now with live TV viewing and DVR. Click the link in the video description to learn more. This is the Elik Live, E like Live, E like Live, E like Live. <laughs> it's the E60 video capture box. It is a pretty generic looking video capture card that you know, re resembles a few of the generic capture cards that I'm actually going to be reviewing soon on the channel. This is a 1080p 60 FPS capture card that's available currently on Amazon for $119.99, so $120 US. It can pass through 4K 30 Hertz, but it is not HDMI 2.0, so it's either 4K 30, no 4K 60 pass through, and if you do use 4K pass through, it will be downscaled to 1080p during capture, but you cannot pass through 4K60 from a game console, so uh, that kind of pass through is pretty much useless. And by only putting 4K pass through in the direct like main product listing, I find that a little misleading and get tired when they do it. But they do say at some point on the product page that it's only 30 hertz, which is whatever. On one end of the device, you have your HDMI full size input and output for the lag free pass through, which is completely untouched as far as I can tell. On the other end, you have three 3.5mm jacks. You have an output jack to run to your headphones, preferably a gaming headset that has built-in audio volume control on the headset itself, because otherwise you have zero control over the volume out of this. And then you have both a microphone and a line-in input, which is kind of interesting, and I'll touch on in a moment. And then a USB Type-C for 3.1 Gen 1 connectivity. And then in the box, they actually include quite a bit of cabling for this. So right up front, you have a USB Type-C to Type-A port if you wish to connect this to your mobile device, as this comes from the same line of Cloner Alliance supporting products that I've covered, I covered one capture card of before, where with specific apps, you can hook it up to a phone and use it. Not really a viable use case, but if you do want to do that, you have the USB-C adapter or there is a... A micro USB OTG adapter included in the box, as well as an HDMI cable. And then there is a driver and application software CD if you so happen to want specific drivers, but this is a UVC class device. So it does basically work plug and play. The drivers install automatically in Windows. It works fine in Windows, even in the Windows 10 camera app or in VLC or vir virtually any capture solution. I use OBS Studio for most of my captures. And it does work in my testing in, or my brief testing in Linux under Ubuntu, and it will probably work in every other, and in Mac OS Mojave. On the top of the device, you just have the brand name, and on the bottom, you have a serial sticker as well as a CD key for that UX Player app. I covered this in my Rei Camlink knockoff review. Uh, I'm not gonna, I didn't even bother installing it again. These kind of capture apps are handy to have if you just really need a capture solution, but otherwise, I don't even recommend installing them on your system. Just run with the default driver in OBS or whatever your preferred application is and move along. Capture spec, again, it captures up to 1080p 60 FPS in either MJPEG compressed encoding, which would require more CPU power to decode, or in the raw YUY2 420 color space uh, feed, which is the lowest latency and easiest for your CPU to handle if you're on a relatively modern machine. There's no RGB mode, there's nothing else, just YUI2 or MJPEG, which is fine. YUI2 mode looks plenty good enough, and I tested it in both uh, full and partial YUI modes in OBS Studio. If you're not aware of this, it's just a way you can configure the feed for the basically RGB range. And I found it to be a little contrasty, so I actually recommend using the full range, both in your OBS settings and in the video capture device settings for this device as it gets pretty contrasty and dark at times, which this will help with by expanding the range. You can capture any way you want. It's 1080p signal. It looks fine. Uh, if the input does change resolution or is first detected, it will actually show a little banner, kind of like old VCRs, saying what the input and output resolution is. That may bother some purists who want absolutely clean feed. Uh, it's fine for me. And then if you have no signal, it actually has a screensaver that pops up saying no signal, which is kind of neat. Again, the video capture feed is fine. It looks great. It worked, you know, it's a capture card. They don't exactly look very different. Looks pretty good. 
It is fairly low latency, but as with most capture cards, I tried playing a first person shooter off of the preview, and there's just... Meh. It can even be as much as 20 ms of delay between the real time feed and the preview feed, but it's just ever so slight. Like you could barely tell looking at the, you know, pass through and the capture side by side, but there's just such a small, you know, there's, there's still a delay there that really messes me up for shooters. So on top of the fact that I was testing this with the console and haven't played console shooters in a while, playing from the preview is not a good experience. Now, as far as audio goes, audio seemed to be fine from this, and I went ahead and tested those. I want to start testing the 35 millimeter jacks more. First, I hooked up uh, my Sennheiser Mastrop gaming headset to the output and the mic in, and that worked all right. With this, though, the problem is that you have no control over the, the level balance of your microphone versus your gameplay and things like that, so you have to lower your game sound in-game or in your console in order to manage it as it all comes through as one input via the HDMI feed in OBS. The advantage here is that everything's coming in at the same time, so theoretically desync would never be an issue. I played a round of it and actually posted it as a sort of live commentary to my gaming channel if you're interested in checking out the full clip, but you can listen to a little bit of this. Oh, that's a lot of enemies. And the auto-aim! The auto-aim drug me between people. What a joke, man. Boo. Yep, I got that. Look at that auto-aim! That just drugs so far! And then I did the same thing, but instead of using the microphone input, I used the line-in input. Now, theoretically, you can use both of these and use the line-in to run your stream alert sound or your phone for playing music or something, but I just simply unplugged the microphone and then ran a line out from my audio mixer to this. So then you could get your full stream audio that you would normally have routing directly into your computer or into OBS, but routed in here to go along with the audio or with the HDMI feed and again stay in sync but you get to hear my fancy microphone that I'm using now again sample uploaded to the gaming channel but you can listen to a little bit of it here there I blocked the enemies the opponents however you say it in sports ball yeah that guy is gonna carry us to maybe tying I'm impressed I'm not helping <laughs> Now the long sides of the device have some ventilation holes as if this is like a heat sink for the device. However, I went ahead and undid the size four, I believe, hex screws around the four corners on the bottom and took it out. There's no heat sink, there's no fan, nothing like that. It's not even using the chassis as a heat sink. That's fine, most of these don't require it. I do worry about like super long-term reliability of not running heat sinks on these capture cards, but it's just for show, it looks nice, but it is pretty high build quality and it's solid state, like there's no components that are going to move around, so even if you drop this thing a few times, it should be fine because there's nothing in there to like break off or anything really. Overall for 120 bucks, this is a pretty decent 1080p60 capture card. If you need something that has UVC or Linux and Mac support, I, this is an option for you. It doesn't have anything too fancy as far as scaling modes go or anything like that, and it doesn't, doesn't allow for... Uh, 4K60 pass through, which is a little disappointing. And I hate when products advertise 4K and it's only 4K 30 Hertz because virtually nothing transmits a 4K 30 Hertz signal. But yeah, there you go. Pretty straightforward product affiliate product links will be in the description below as always. If you're watching this in early to mid November ish, uh, they do have a coupon for 20% off your purchase. This isn't like a fancy coupon for just me. This is a sale they are running. And of course, Black Friday, Cyber Monday going on, but wanted to let you know about it anyway, just because it's always better to save a little money and you get about 24 bucks off with the coupon. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech, education, and video capture card reviews, and I will see you in the next one.